Hi guys, just a short update. I'm smoking my Falcon with a nice Mr. Sardorian's blend that I've put together myself. And I must say that it's virtually the same as the one that they used to sell. We had to come back earlier from our holiday, partly because Carolyn um, didn't feel very good and we were both really not up to it. I found driving quite difficult and I usually enjoyed driving and in Scotland you're driving for miles to get anywhere and I really didn't want to do that. But when we came back I took my sister-in-law back to Otley. It's where we used to live when I was a teenager, it's where I met Carolyn and it's where both our children were born and brought up at least until they went to junior school. And it's surprising, you live in a place and you don't really take that much notice of it. There used to be two tobacco shops not the opposite each other. And they were both owned by two brothers. Um, it, it was called Barber's um, Tobacconist. They've been in business for quite a while, over 170 years, I think, and it's still in the same family. And they used to have a tobacco factory in Otley. They owned two plantations in the States. Um, one of the first barbers sort of was in England and he got offered some land in the States and originally used it for farming and then turned it into tobacco plantations. Well, these shops were quite well known in the town and eventually one of the brothers retired and closed his shop down and we left. Um, I left to go to theological college and really didn't think about them at all because I wasn't smoking at that time. But my son told me that they'd moved their shop and opened up a new shop. And I decided to call in because I wanted some supplies and some tobacco. And I just hadn't realised how important this shop is, how important this firm is. One of the things I wanted was a falcon bowl. Um, and we were talking, I said, do you have any Falcon Bowls? And she said, yes, we're the sole agents for Falcon Pipes in the UK. We distribute them to all the other firms. They had a, a franchise on it. And it's the same with some of the other pipes they've got. They supply tobacconists around the country with the pipes. And we got talking about tobacco and the way things were today with labelling and that kind of thing. And I really wanted something Turkish. Um, I love Turkish tobacco, I love Russian um, tobacco, or I did when I smoked cigarettes. And she, she hadn't got any Turkish, but she'd got Stokesby Balkan Flake. And I had a sniff and it felt really good, smelt great. And I said, yeah, I'll have, I'll have some of that. So she packed that up loose and I got some Presbyterian mixture, the one that everybody knows. So I want to try that because I've just seen it so often advertised. And I got some three nuns. But we got talking about the old days when the brothers owned a tobacco shop and she was rather surprised that 
I remembered those days because it's quite a while ago. And she explained that when the brothers died, it passed down in the family and she was now running the firm. Along with the help of various other people. Excuse me a minute while I turn my back on you. Very unprofessional. Um, but I thought, you know, you live in a town and you see one of the shops and you know virtually nothing about them. And it was the same when we lived in a place called Ellesmere Port. There was a boat museum there, quite a famous one. And we never went to it until we left the port. And then we were coming back one day and we decided to have a look around. And it got me thinking, I wonder how many times we do that, how many times we miss what's right in front of us. And it's not just with tobacconists or with shops or with that kind of thing. It's with people. We very rarely see what's right in front of us. I remember talking to an old lady in the parish and to be honest I was beginning to think you know one of our senior members and not really thinking much about her at all until she was talking about the war and it turned out that she'd been a one of the ladies who worked on codes and various other things and she said to me you know I knew the war was over when they started broadcasting in plain language and didn't bother about coded messages And the other guy I met was a, an old guy sat in a bus station. And I don't know whether you have the same kind of clothes in America, but he was sat there in his boots with his leather putties around his ankles. And I was just a teenage kid. But we got talking. And he got talking about the war and what it was like for him. And he told me that they weren't allowed to carry photographs or that kind of thing when they went into battle because, you know, they didn't want the enemy to see any photographs and it was a reminder of home and that kind of thing. So they kept them sort of quite hidden. And he'd taken part in this charge, a bayonet charge, and suddenly he came across this German young lad about the same age as him and they stared at each other neither of them had probably killed before certainly not up close and personal And he said he, he moved first and bayoneted this lad. And as the lad fell back, his top pocket opened. And he could see this photograph. And he pulled the bayonet out and the lad died. And he reached down and slid this photograph out of the guy's pocket. And it was, it was, uh, it was a photograph of a woman and two children. And tears were streaming down his face when he was talking to me about it. And he said, you know, up to then I thought, he's the Bosch, he's the enemy, he's the German, the dirty Hun. And he said, as I looked down at him, I realised that he was a young man with a wife and children just like me. And it would affect him for the rest of his life. Well, the times we don't 
notice things perhaps, are not as important as that. But there are people that we come up against who are in need or who have a special story to tell and they just need somebody to listen, somebody to sit there with them and hear what they're saying. And maybe one day when you're smoking a pipe and you're sat down in the town or wherever you are, you might be sat beside somebody or they might sit down beside you. And you might get to listen you might hear their story or they might hear yours the telling of stories to each other the telling of our lives to each other is the greatest thing we can share and it can affect both of us for the rest of our lives I've never forgotten that old man I've no idea who he was or what his name was or anything about him except that one day he went over the top with his bayonet fixed across the ground, the waste ground, the killing ground and ended up killing himself, killing another human being and it stayed with him for the rest of his life well I'm going to leave it there I might post something later about what I'm intending to do um, as a way of a hobby and to do with tobacco and pipes. But may God be with you and may you be able to tell your story or hear somebody else's. <laughs>